Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and welcome to another episode of this uh, webinar series called Archicad Now. This is the last episode of um, series three, and we couldn't end up better than with Kihua presenting today with us. So besides me, Marcelo Mourinho as the business development, and James Badcock as BIM consultant of Graphics of Singapore and Malaysia, we have the pleasure to have today Kihua uh, from Ezra Architects. I will introduce him right away. So uh, this is the fourth episode. So throughout the last few weeks of August, on every day on Tuesdays at 5 p.m., we always meet to cover a topic, either some tips and tricks, um, some workflow related. So we had uh, 3D styles, tips and tricks. Uh, I've shown uh, Archicad and Twinmotion workflow. And last week, James showed also the how to customize Archicad work environment. All these sessions are available on YouTube, so we can all um, uh, reach out to them and, and get these uh, nice tips at any time. And in today's session, uh, Kihua is a very familiar face, a known face to most of our users here. We had the pleasure of having him sharing uh, his experience in previous events, from user days to to um, even government events or institutional events, like uh, in PAM Malaysia last year, uh, in SIA a few years ago. So today, uh, Kiwa will come in, uh, come in with an update and a message to show how he's been using Archicad lately. And he's always uh, paying attention to see what's out there and always trying to take advantage of the newest technology. So I'm sure it will be quite entertaining. If you want to find uh, more uh, things about uh, Ezra Architects and, and how they work, you can go either to their website or you can even uh, go to our to graphisoft.com website and under the case studies, uh, we were fortunate to have Kihua presenting uh, and doing a video um, interview. Uh, this was a few years ago, eh, Kiwa? Yeah, many years ago. Yeah, several ones. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. And um, yeah, so let's see uh, now what he has for us uh, with today's topic. So Kiwa, you can take the the screen away from me. Just click to share the screen and the stage is all yours. So everyone feel free to, you know, uh, either keep your questions or you write the questions or if you have something that is you want to ask at the moment, this is a very informal kind of kind of uh, session. So uh, just lean back, relax and see what um, Kiwa has to amaze us today. Thank you, Kiwa. Yeah, um, I can't switch to my screen yet. Okay, let me see. I make presenter. Okay. Okay. So if you click click screen, is it okay now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm not sure how many is listening to this. Uh, my first time doing uh, something like this on the web, uh, so <laughs> bear with me if there's some uh, technical issues, switching of screens, etc. Um, yeah, so basically my topic today is very simple, huh? just an update and uh, a message. I think the message is uh, more important because I think Archicad and BIM enable uh, architects like us uh, to do much more today. So, uh, well, our company have been using Archicad for 13 years. So uh, in previous events that Marcelo mentioned, you know, we have, I have talked about uh, how efficient Archicad is and well, what is BIM and et cetera, all these things. I, I believe everyone knows all this already. So today is basically an uh, update uh, showing you guys and sharing um, some of the latest uh, work or recent works that we have done. Um, well, first off, uh, this uh, 
recent, as you can see, the date there hopefully is uh, is on the 17th of June, two three months back. So almost fresh from the oven. It's a uh, it's a conceptual master planning and architectural design in, that we did in in China. It's for a, a eco resort uh, project. So well, it is so conceptual and preliminary that we don't even have a full set of topographical plan in this case. So as you can see on the right here, it's basically my my sketch of the terrain lines based on the satellite um, wow. image that we can find in Google. So, so the information given us was incomplete and that's why it is at a very conceptual stage of the project. So with my sketch, uh, my team uh, model out the site Usually, this is the first thing that we do. Uh, well, because architecture has to be rooted on on the site. So uh, this almost the first thing that we do every time. Um, so this the what you see there one two three uh, the three plots on uh, a pretty hilly uh, terrain. Um, the am I able to minimize this? Oops, sorry. I can say, oops, where am I? Yeah. Is now this you're... window covering? Oh, I think you're on your email now. Yeah. Were you guys seeing the full screen? Is yeah. there something yeah. covering? Oh, okay. So, well, sorry about that. Uh, the project is, uh, well, you can see here, consists of uh, apartments or hotel block and uh, hotel villas and as well as uh, uh, a landscape decks that we design which uh, houses the car parks and whatever so basically the components of the projects uh, in, in G's and uh, and because it's on a hilly side and next to a very uh, uh, tourist attraction with caves and and so on we try to mimic that in our architectural design so as usual whenever we start a design the well first the terrain and then after that the messing in this case still pretty much at the messing stage you can see that we already have all the uh, area calculations that we have to meet uh, you know the client and the authorities requirements so uh, this is the areas that we have for the landscape decks because they are terracing uh, up um as part of the architecture um well this one of the three perspectives that we did for the client and i wish to highlight that this perspective is from twin motion and not uh from the uh inbuilt rendering engine uh cine render in archicad i think my team has already gotten very accustomed to using twin motion uh to do to produce renderings because uh, I think it saves us a lot of the waiting time. Uh, again, next, well, perspective. This is uh, the next view. And this is the final view. And in fact, uh, for this, uh, we spent three weeks um, producing what you see here. And uh, within these three weeks, uh, one week and maybe plus one or two days, we were working on the terrain so that means uh, the actual design work uh, is only about two weeks and what you see here what we produce is also within two weeks and there's a video of this project that we did using twin motion and i would like to show it to you um, allow me to go to quick time So we tested just now, it's a bit jerky, so I guess we, we have no choice. Yeah. Well, I think pin motion really allows us to do animation like this very quickly and with very realistic uh, plant, plantings, vegetation, you know, that that print motion has within the library uh, its own library so as long so in this case it's a very 
conceptual and preliminary uh, design stage uh, and and right from this stage you know right from the model that we have in Articat, we can already um, produce something like this which really impresses by uh, whichever clients that we, we face somehow people just like to see things move so that's the interesting thing that we discover since we started uh, using twin motion as uh, as part of our workflow in our work mm -hmm. and then you just edit and put the, the music on top right so a very simple um walk along the entire uh, building uh, because it has a lot of curves so walk, walking along it to experience the curve and eventually you know zooming out to to capture the entire master plan of the design uh, everything is done in-house even the music and the editing or simple editing you know but of course the choice of the music is important and and well and the cinematography if you like so something as simple as this as preliminary as it is we produce something like this i think our our, our client really were impressed so so this is the, I guess, the advantage that we have um, using Archicad and nowadays a twin motion as part of our workflow. Let me go back to my slide. Okay, this was the video. Okay. Sorry. Um, in this project, just now what you, you saw, you see that the the building is very curvy uh, in fact every level has a different curve and if you notice just now on every level we have planter boxes uh, that is uh, you know outside the so-called the balustrade of the building so um well i guess it's my crazy mind and imagination that every level has to be a different curve so mm -hmm. So and I also request uh, the the planter boxes to be to be done, and uh, our team in in Guangzhou uh, came up with a, I guess an ingenious method uh, to to achieve that using a grasshopper. So uh, if I were to drag this video, uh, hopefully you guys can see it. So you see the whole form of the architecture here. Yeah, this is the model of the the form that we have and uh, just for the purpose of demonstration we show you a level uh, one level uh, what you see here is a curve line of uh, the first level so in Archicad I guess you can't really segment it in equal distances and and because every level is different in in curvature so uh, my guy, my guy was telling me that if if he were to do it in Archicad, this will take like maybe three three days or more. But but he actually only used uh, one day to uh, with the help of Grasshopper to achieve this. So what you see here is the curve line, and of course the curve line is drawn in Archicad. Uh, what we have there, and and what you see here is the two profiles that we have. So um, up till now, the same thing in within Archicad, the two um, profiles that would in together form the you know what you see uh, in the in the design. So after that is um, bring this line into something like uh, uh, Rhino. And by the use of uh, Grasshopper, we actually segment um, this line uh, in distances. Well, if if one is familiar with this, you you probably will understand this. So 
importing the, the polyline into uh, Rhino and Grasshopper, and after that breaking it up, and then assigning assigning the different um, profiles to the different segments of the uh, of the curvature. So um, if I were to bring your attention, if you can see the um, where my mouse is pointing now, uh, these three variables is what we use to control the different uh, spacing and the randomness and the length of the um, planter boxes. So, and of course at the end, you know, we have all this, uh, you need to connect it back to Archicad and using the Grasshopper Live connection thing. So uh, everything would almost be uh, automated. Uh, let me drag to the last part whereby you'll see. Okay, this part is when we, the three variables that I was talking just now, um, when you adjust them, in this case, the first one is the length of the planter box. In what you see here, the 10 is like 10 meters. The next one is like the proportion of the the uh, planter box and the non-planter boxes. And the third variable is basically the randomness. So just by playing with these three variables, we can come up with unlimited uh, possibility. As you can see, it changes already. Mm -hmm. So this is how we came up with the, as you can see, when we adjust it further. So just by playing, you get this live updating of the planter boxes in Archicad. So this is how we uh, made use of Grasshopper and achieved this in this, in this project. Interesting. Uh, it, this it, is it, a bit, you know, if, if any one of you is... Curve, Sorry? You are. That's a very long curve. So even if you had to do that, it might seem it's just a little bit. But if you had to do that along such long curves, just to test a few options, that would take you quite a long time. This way you just do <laughs> yeah. some random, just some yes. random options and yeah. you can see. Your... Yes. Yes. Uh, my, my guy was telling me he probably need three days to complete one version. Yeah. <laughs> but in this case, we spend one day uh, well, thanks to Ayuan, who is also listening now. Um, the, just by doing this, you know, we can have uh, different, you know, different uh, variations as much as we like. And as you can see here, now after setting the the distance of the planter box uh, as two meters, you can see, and together with the random uh, random setting, you can see that the planter box is totally different again. Yeah. So. And yep, as a result, this thing. Okay, um, next. Uh, I just put this in because uh, during the recent 24 event, uh, Archicad 24 event, I think it was last, was it last Thursday? Last Thursday. Yeah, last week. Yeah, someone was uh, asking whether can we use Archicad, the relevance of Archicad. Uh, for landscape ar uh, architect. Uh, so I, I think you, some of you guys have probably heard me before. We have also used Archicad uh, in landscape projects that we have in, in China. So basically all the, uh, all the uh, plants that we have in, in uh, the design can be, tip, uh, can be, you know, quantified and, and, we can churn up schedule like this uh, easily. And of course, all your hardscape, your benches and whatnot, your exterior lighting, all this, all this. Uh, yeah, so the answer is yes, definitely for landscape architect because we, we have used it. And, and to make things even better, it's not only the information that we can churn up from a BIM landscape uh, project. Uh, now with um, um, twin motion, uh, in fact, we also produce uh, videos like this for our landscape projects. Um, this is uh, the day scene from the day uh, to evening of uh, this project, and also the night, uh, the night scene, 
I think there's some delay and, and jerkiness that you probably experienced. Mm -hmm. I apologize for that. Uh, basically, this is showing what it looks like at night uh, because we have this mist uh, that we have on uh, on this uh, water water Japanese landscape uh, that we have here. And what you see here is a water feature. Is it refreshed? Um, the water yeah. feature that we have along this uh, hotel, uh, you can see, let me try to play it again. You can see the same mist, you know, the koi swimming uh, amongst our pavilion that yeah. we design together with the landscape. So, so I, I think this, this yes for, for landscape too. And uh, sorry if it jerks again. Uh, this is well more architecture. This is the entrance of uh, uh, an underground project that we are doing in, in Guangzhou now. So this is like the entrance shelter, if you like, you know, going underground. And the next, this is the another design. So produce very quick uh, animations like this from day to night, from a sunny day to a rainy night, uh, seeing the reflections on the floor. Uh, so this, I, I, I feel, is very invariable uh, when it comes to our design work. And, and this is the underground mall that I mentioned just now. Uh, this part of it, uh, and uh, Yes, so the my point is yes, also for interior design work. Uh huh. Quite nice. I think oh, it would be jerky, but I guess no choice. It is very detailed. Yeah, it's a pity that due to the I think the best part is everything is within the uh, Archicad as the as the main software, and now with the extension of Rhino Grasshopper and Twin Motion, I think I think it makes our work and our workflow very natural and and easy because because yeah we we model in Archicad and all these are just the I would like to think it as uh, see it as uh, branches extending out from the tree yeah. and the tree is actually lucky cat. So, so the core would be normally you could have de delivered most of these, but that like extends the capabilities, right? Uh, yes, and we feel that, oh, of course, after we finish a design, after we finish modeling in Archicad, of course, doing an animation is like additional work. But I feel that very often we feel that we are only doing only one thing we are only yeah. doing the design and all these are just very simple and quick extensions that yeah. we need to do design our work it's like just so, for communication better communication right of the project better communication efficiency yeah yeah definitely yes so um, the second part of uh, my sharing today is a message. Um, um, oops. Oops. Oh, sorry. This is not the end yet. Uh, yeah. This is the last slide that I show in uh, in my talk uh, in in PEM uh, KL last year, and. And the reason being in that occasion, I think I probably coined the, the term I architect. Yeah. Uh, may sound a bit cliche like iPhone, but the I here means information. Um, I think uh, I think this is this message is uh, uh, pretty. I, I would think that it's a new new topic, something that probably people in our profession have to sit down and discuss about it. But let me let me explain uh, why this pair of hands uh, is basically, this pair of hands is the, the hands of a conductor and, and this guy here, you know, at the center, which we are all familiar with. And I think that our role as architects, you know, is not much different from, from this guy here. 
that we see here holding the, you know, um, conducting, uh, coordinating Man. everyone who is playing different instruments. So, so and and what do I mean? And this uh, goes back to my speech last year. Uh, it's actually in a funny way entitled past tense, uh, present tense, and future tense. And this was what I was trying to talk about. I try to understand this diagram. The three circles actually is the um, architect's role ring, okay, uh, from the past, present, and and future. And the red line in the middle is actually like a timeline uh, of how we practice uh, our uh, our work, how we do our work, and it's also uh, something like a technological timeline. Uh, let me explain further. Um, okay, the three circles, remember? Uh, so this is the past circle. Uh, I sort of, you know, trace back the, the role of the architect from, you know, the past, present, and then future, hopefully. And the middle line, the red line, is actually the timeline. You can see that, you know, ancient times, we probably produce our drawings, probably carved on stones. And, and this guy here, uh, the, the face that you see here, he's probably the first architect uh, in the whole history of the world who built the pyramid. And architect traditionally is known as the chief, uh, chief builder. So, um, and then even, and then things start to change uh, when there is, when we have the industrial revolution and things start to break up. So from the chief builder, our trade and specialization starts to get broken up because uh, windows and doors are mass produced and, and we have many different trades. So, so like for example, the present, the present, um, this is the so different circles that you see here actually represents the different uh, specialists or different consultants that we face in our work, uh, fire specialists, acoustic specialists, and so on. So, and also because the building nowadays are getting more and more complex, so that's why all this uh, breaking up of, and and very often as architects we find that our our role our, you know, is being we are also known as the jack of all trades and master of none. But then, but then I think this is the the strongest point that we have, because if you think back to what the conductor does in the symphony orchestra, he is the the, the main person that is controlling everything. So even, yeah. even when you see, you know, the red line, the red line actually shows you the, this is actually AutoCAD version one on, on the left. And on the right is actually uh, ArchiCAD version one on a Macintosh. So even when technology actually advances, you know, from paper drawings to, to CAD and then nowadays Beam, uh, I feel that this whole picture here is still very broken up. So basically what I'm trying to, uh, the message that I'm trying to bring across is that with the help of BIM, uh, BIM, well, in this case, in our, our case is Akikat, uh, I think we have a chance to be, I, I call it the commander of information here. Uh, because if you look at it as a architect as a as a role we need to be the person who has the whole picture of the whole construction project right uh, we have to uh, well we have to deal with the structure engineer qs and and many engineer and many other uh, specialists if your project is very complex uh, but i think with uh, with a, a skill, with this know-how of uh, BIM, uh, that means this skill that we have, now that we are being enabled with a software like Archicad, I feel that we can, this is our age now, uh, our age that we can take back this, uh, this control, uh, as in we will be, we should be the main person and the commander of information and and how we tie all this information together and make sure that they um, 
how, how do I say that they, you know, uh, coincide with each other and not uh, uh, against each other. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is precisely, it is precisely of this belief that uh, actually this, what you see here is two marketing, uh, BIM uh, marketing videos that we have done for ourselves and partnering with, uh, you know, a local China design institute uh to to market our know-how uh in producing uh building information modeling uh, i guess you are familiar with all this on the right is basically the functions of the beam x and on the left is actually you know the mep stuff uh that we try to showcase and and tell people that we can do much more than what we traditionally offer. And, mm. and this video is also especially interesting because it is, it is already stepping out beyond our normal scope of uh, architectural work. Uh, we did this for a uh, kitchen specialist in China to show him how he can make use of uh, our BIM know-how uh, to, to make his work more efficient. Uh, let me fast forward this. So in this video, uh, we tell them that, you know, our model is uh, different from your current uh, model that you have because our model has all this information. Uh, we show them how, how easy it is to make changes. And once the changes is made, all the information will be synchronized uh, automatically. So informations like how many panels of doors do you have, uh, the length of trim that you will have in total, uh, what is the area of the finishes, and in this case, what you see here is like the equipment specification could also be, you know, uh, inside one entire model. And what you see here is actually the schedule of all the different modules. So the different sizes, even to the extent of how many hinges and handles that you have. So producing information like this to try to convince people that, uh, you know, what we can offer you is much more than uh, probably what you're doing now. So this is what we have produced, something that is already beyond beyond um, the normal role of an architect. So the I actually means information and, and, and I, an I architect doesn't mean that, you know, an architect that is just doing architectural work, but, you know, in the current, in the current, uh, you know, the, the, the world that we are facing now with COVID-19 and all that, our Singapore government, for example, talking about reinventing ourselves and diversification. So what I'm saying is that with the know-how of BIM and Archicad, we can actually venture out to more avenues that we can never do, you know, before. Yeah. So that is the message. And, and by that, I, I end my uh, talk. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh... Thanks, Kiwa. It's really impressive. The first, what, what in one year, you know, the number of projects you've been involved and in, uh, the scale of them and actually the response. I know you only chose a couple of examples to, to bring it here. Uh, I also like the concept of the eye architect. In, in a way, it's a bit in line with uh, what Catherine was showing uh, last week for this um, uh, Archicad 24 uh, launch that we had that is pretty much saying that you know as designers as the architects we should take the role of the master builder or the glue that will make all the trades come together and we should you know have in our in the building design everything put in so uh, I also like how you put um, the fact that we we only benefit from having, for example, the BIM model in our project, right? A lot of people ask me, but what if I model the BIM, the BIM elements, I'll be doing the MEP engineer's job. 
yeah but you also have a better model with everything there so you it will prevent you from putting let's say suspended ceilings in fault in locations that you wouldn't be um that you wouldn't be uh, that you shouldn't be putting and things like that so yeah i think the the key thing is exactly that that we should take control of the projects put in all the information there get everyone to communicate and to talk about it and the better you know the output of your presentations the better your model is the more uh, the easier your 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 job is in this sense so I think today is really interesting. Uh, um, RJ is, is saying thank you, Kihua. Uh, Jorge said uh, also congrats, very nice projects. I'm, I'm also happy to see how you pack so much um, technology into a project. So you're actually taking advantage of end to end using Rhino Grasshopper to solve some repetitive tasks using um, um twin motion for the presentations um yeah you use also the mep good news for everyone that is entitled to archicad 24 mep is now fully um uh, integrated with archicad so every every designer architect everyone should be able to to put the the mep elements there so i would like to open up now to the the to everyone in the audience, see whoever wants to ask questions. We have a uh, Kiwa here. So, like anything about the projects or how in their practice they ta tackle something, uh, would anyone like to? Yeah, and then anybody can open up their mic uh, if they want yeah. to. Yeah, I think everyone shy. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Ki. How are you? Jorge. Jorge here. Oh, hi. Hi, my Welcome friend. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Really, really good stuff. I mean, I we know each other for a long time as well. And and I've seen, you know, you working with Archicad uh, for many, many years. But it's, it's, it's still impressive to see what you guys can achieve with, uh, you know, with Archicad and, and with uh, Twinmotion now. Um, no, I was I was uh, I was interested to see because I think that we have shared like more or less the same path, right? Uh, sort of like chasing technology and chasing the uh, trying to see, you know, especially in regards with twin motion and and all these VR uh, new technologies. Like, how do you how do you feel about uh, I don't know, like other sort of like render um, technologies. Now, do you guys still use any of those or you're just focusing on on twin motion now and and, and real rendering, like real time rendering? Uh, yeah, I, w I would have to tell you that we have thrown everything else out of the window. Uh, there was one time when we were still using Atlantis for our yeah. work. Uh, and then when I think when I'm not sure which version of Archicad came along and there is Cine render inside, you know, I, I'm yes. one who 18. believe 18, right? Minimizing. Yeah. You know, the lesser things you need to me is better. Yeah. Right? So that's true. So and and nowadays because we have twin motion and it's so fast to to there is a difference in quality actually. Um Yes, Cine render versus uh, versus twin motion. There's this very subtle difference in the rendering quality, but because of the efficiency, yeah. we nowadays yeah more twin motion than than even you know the Archicad inbuilt renders. Yeah, I, I I agree. I mean, I, I think that everybody that it's been maybe involved with rendering, you know, it's still like a little bit uh you know frustrated about like certain small things that that happens into emotion at least that's what happens for me but it's so efficient and so quick that you know you, you almost need to uh accept that and kind of like because because almost only architects see this you know this small yeah. difference. like the, the quality is really good actually um no i'm i mean i'm, I'm curious to see uh or, or i'm happy to see that you know like a, a company like yours is also 
uh, kind of like following the same path. We have also ditched almost every other software uh, for rendering. Uh, some of our guys were still trying to use um, a V-Ray for certain certain small things, maybe like more product design, like trying what again? Sorry, uh, Unreal. You know, like Unreal as a, as the software as well. So, um, so the, oh, the twin motion. Yeah, twin motion uh, no, we can really. I think that is to me a bit more, uh, more technically challenging I'm, i in fact i do not know much about it because uh, i also believe in terms of minimizing the number of softwares that we need it's also about yeah. you know the the learning curve that every single one in my office have to go through so mm -hmm. i prefer a broader a broader platform whereby everybody can jump onto rather than something very specialized because the quality itself if if we want something an animation that is very like like hollywood let's say you know uh, that is something that we that possibly we have to sub it out to a professional to do it uh, i but, see yeah. yeah you get what i mean yeah i believe in and, a broader base that, you, know, you said okay. yeah no this this leads me to my next question is like, do you guys have any like, how do you say, more like specialized group of people or or person that is dealing with uh, with uh, visuals, or is like everybody in the office is sort of like doing everything? Yeah, like I say, it's a it's a it's a broad based thing. So uh, everyone in the company has more or less the same skill set. I would say that. Because mm -hmm. everyone only, only uses, okay, Grasshopper is slightly more specialized. Not everyone has uh, touched Grasshopper, I would say, but definitely yeah. everyone has touched Archicad and Twinmotion. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Sim similar here, I think. Yeah, and actually, Robbie office. is asking exactly that. Uh, like, how, uh, so he's asking if you can share uh, Kiwa, how in your office, uh, you have explored Rhino and Grasshopper. How did, you, did your staff go through like any specific uh, training for parametric design, or was it some expertise they they already had before? Uh, okay, actually we have Enzyme to thank, okay, and uh, <laughs> uh, because I remember uh, attending, I, I'm I'm not sure what is that one of the events in in Singapore and. Uh, and and the other guys, uh, the other guy, uh, Jorge's partner was somebody by the name of I cannot remember, but I Eugenio. saw his presentation. Eugenio, Sorry? is it? Eugene. Uh, yes, yes, it? Eugenio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, I've I've seen I I've seen presentations like this, and I went back to office and tell everyone that oh no, we are behind. You know, we have been using Archicad for so <laughs> long, and and now we are behind. You know. So you basically, I, what yeah. I did was nobody attended any any courses. What I did was I highlighted this this significance of uh, uh, parametric design, and and I got I got a group of people who is more uh, technology in, inclined to to start learning Grasshopper, and this this learning is through a video. Uh, videos that we have in YouTube, uh, books, and and basically they just uh, play around, and and I have uh, sometimes I have imaginations of certain things I want to do, uh, so I will ask them to explore, and and slowly yeah we we pick that up. But I, I would say that we are definitely not as uh, uh, expert as an enzyme <laughs> when it comes to grasshopper. No, I don't. I don't agree. I see very, very advanced stuff in your in your project. So, we... no, I have my I have my team uh, to to thank. I hope they are hearing this. You know, yeah. they are they are they are very much uh, in uh, in the same frequency as I am. Or maybe or maybe when I get people, I get people of the same frequency. I'm not sure, uh, but we are all pretty interested in all this, you know, technological stuff. But I don't think we are something that I don't agree is chasing technology. I don't think we are chasing technology. We are learning technology 
and to ultimately do what we like most design and yeah. uh so yeah well also the fact that you know you see something and then you go after it uh is is, is already like you know a, a forward thinking uh, attitude because you know a lot of people when they see okay oh um jorge presented something with rhino grasshopper they say oh this looks so complicated i i dare not touch it or i don't want to go there you know and then there's other people that go and say okay i see this i see the potential on it let's start and even even jorge started slowly right you didn't go and do a script that you design a whole city all the way to the door handles you have to start somewhere and i think the example of the planter box that you showed is very interesting so you have a curve and then you decide to divide the curve in many different ways so i think it's a good lesson for everyone that that sees here and uh, that attends these sessions like from the user point of view how can you start you know using and adapting to to the technology I agree actually i was surprised by the planter box uh, grasshopper uh, solution yeah because uh uh Ayuan actually gave me a surprise i didn't ask for for that i only wanted my planter boxes so <laughs> he actually uh, took the opportunity to to do that in grasshopper and and it was really surprising to me so all the previous encouragement of learning uh grasshopper you know the, means that it didn't go to waste it paid off huh? yeah yeah i think that, that that is it also i think you know it's it has to be a concerted effort and it should happen at every level right basically at the management level you were supporting you know the time to learn and to invest into going through new technology and then from the user point of view instead of saying no i will do this based on hard work uh, just do one option then kihua wants another option never mind i'll do another option then never mind i'll do another option you know it's it's good to see that you know uh, people want to do this at, at every single level and that's that's the only way to go forward you know and obviously the less um, levels we have the easier it is to implement technology because you imagine the user doesn't need to ask the project director who doesn't need to ask to the, the department manager that doesn't need to ask the ceo you know or something like that so yeah the the smaller i would say the the smaller the company is uh, the faster it is to to chase and to adopt these kind of technologies because you, you rely on less people and like how catherine uh, mentioned last week on the long, uh, on the experience architect 24 if you're one one person company to implement bim is a lot faster one person learn it is 100 percent implementation already. Yeah. <laughs> so, i saw so, that yes yeah so it, this this reminds me a bit of this and uh i know personally some of your staff and i know that they're very driven and very committed whenever there's trainings there's an opportunity to learn they're also there because you also, you know, push for that culture of, you know, exploring and being ahead and taking advantage of technology. So, well, this, this group is all about this today. Uh, this Archicad now is about people who are trying to see ways to improve the, the workflow and how to work smarter every day. So thank you guys. So, so, I think uh, this Sing Meng Chu is it Chu from your company, uh, Jorge? So we have here a, a feedback from a client saying that is a great practical demonstration of Archicad. Thank you. Yokme is also thanking. So I think we can wrap up the the session. Let me take over the screen from you. Yeah. Thanks. Great presentation. Yeah, Kihua, you never cease to to impress. And you bring things yeah. to very, very digestible terms, which is quite quite interesting. So, okay, now wrapping up the session, um, I would like to thank uh, again uh, Kiwa for 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 this uh, message and the update that you had for us. Hopefully, you know, 
in about a year's time, we have you again, if not before, to showcase further advancements. Uh, I would like to also ask you all to engage in our social media. So we've been sharing our our events, our uh, initiatives on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So just by scanning the QR codes, you can access this. Uh, uh, social media platforms. Um, another another important one and probably the most important for the for this audience is the YouTube channel. So basically, we have been increasing the the content that we have. So three months ago, when or four months ago, when this whole lockdown thing started, we decided you know it's quite a good time to start adding content here. And now we have, I would say, probably over 20 videos, or even more. No, James, you should be more. Uh, okay, I have to count. <laughs> okay, but we've been uh, populating every, quite every mo every Monday. Every Monday we we wake up with a new video from James. So. Oh, okay, <laughs> so weekly, at least weekly, we have been populating with new videos. And this is not just, for example, we have this webinar series episodes where we have users sharing their experience, where we have uh, some tips and tricks from us, uh, but we also have some uh, particular or some specific uh, events that we had. So for example, about this uh, parametric design, we had a one day session with um, uh, BCA here in Singapore that they organized this uh, um, webinar. So if you want to find you know more extensive information about this you can you can find it here. We also have done other um, tips and tricks that you can find on the group. So it's quite nice to 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 subscribe to the channel and then just browse through to see if there's any content that is relevant for you. Um, then for for the clients um, mainly in Singapore we have the the courses that are available. Uh, online, so you can just go to graphisoft.com slash sg slash courses and you can find the basic trainings, advanced modeling and advanced documentation trainings. These are the upcoming dates. Um, in case these are fill up quite fast, you can join them uh, later on. Um, and then this is the, the calendar for the webinar series four. So coming soon, uh, we'll we'll st have this like in two weeks from now. The um, we'll have a, a, our normal two weeks of break, uh, and then we'll have one one topic that will be about open BIM collaboration. So how to to collaborate with other softwares and interface with other softwares. Some best practices and considerations. Then we'll have another session that is more specific about bringing Revit families into ARCHICAD. So we have this uh, plugin RFA and RVT geometry exchange that uh, James Badcock will, will showcase how it works. Then we'll have another uh, session about Paramo and, and Python. So ARCHICAD 24 has been extended with uh, a lot of automation and parametric object creation. So we're gonna showcase a uh, very high level how this works. And then the last session, we'll have a user experience sharing. We are still uh, confirming the front with, the, with the speaker this information, but uh, we hope that soon we can send this uh, on an email to, to you guys so that you can see what's coming up. Okay, so I think that with this, uh, I would like to thank you all for attending the session. And um, looking forward to see you on the next series. Okay, as Ricardo is saying to everyone, nice presentation and cheers. So thank you all. Enjoy the rest of the, the rest of the evening, and uh, catch up soon. Thanks everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks to you all once Bye. again. Bye. Thank you guys. Thank you. Okay.